Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the JRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award lecture. May I now invite Mr. Nikhil Sani, Vice President, IMA and Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Triveni Turbine Limited, and Dr. Pavan Munjal, Chairman and CEO, Hero Motor Corp, onto the virtual dais. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Pavan Munjal, Chairman and CEO, Hero Motor Corp Limited. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you in a special session with one of India's most successful business leaders and brand builders. Dr. Munjal, many congratulations on receiving the IMA GRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award. This is one of the most prestigious corporate awards in the country, and it is nominated and adjudicated by peer CEOs. You are in the August company. The past five winners of this award are Mr. N. Chandrasekharan, the chairman of Tata Sons, Mr. Nandan Nilkani, non-executive chairman of Infosys, Mr. Aditya Puri, previous managing director of HDFC Bank, Mr. Mukesh Ambani, chairman and managing director of Reliance Industries, and Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, chairman and managing director of Hindustan Unilever, who is also the chairman of the award jury, jury this year. You have set a very high standard of scale and innovation in India's motorcycles and scooters market, and you are leading Indian mobility industry into a green future. Under your leadership, Dr. Munjal, Hero has been the world's largest two-wheeler maker since 2001, and it has cumulatively sold more than 100 million vehicles. You have turned Hero into an, into an internationally recognized brand through your business operations and sports sponsorships. You make Hero products in three countries, sell those in 42 countries, and you have employees from over 10 countries. You are aggressively investing in the electric mobility space and have taken stakes in promising EVs and battery startups in India and Taiwan. You are also passionate about sports and have promoted the Hero brand through extensive sponsorships across multiple sports, including golf, shooting, football, hockey, motorsports, and of course, cricket. It is IMA's privilege to honor you with this year's IMA JRD Tata Corporate, JRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award. Dr. Munjal, it's a pleasure to have you in this session and many thanks for agreeing to deliver the JRD Tata Memorial Lecture. This is a great opportunity for us to learn from your experience of building a great company and a great brand and also to learn about how you are dealing with the current uncertainty and change. Your company is at the forefront of one of the major technological and business model revolutions in the past century. The shift from the internal combustion engine and garage maintenance to electric drive and software upgrades and also the shift from predominantly individual ownership of personal vehicles to vehicle as services. Increasingly, consumers are owned by digital platforms and the automakers must either beat them or join them. We look forward to hearing your views on the disruptive changes in the automotive industry and mobility business, and also your perspective on technological innovations to fight climate change. I hope that after your in introductory speech, we could you would, it would be possible to take some questions, uh, not only some that we have been able to get from our members, but also from the audience who we have over two and a half thousand of us joining us. Our Zoom platform is already filled to the max, and we now have to move on to our social media platforms, and we are all very eagerly awaiting to hear from you. So now, Dr. Munjal, it's our pleasure to invite you to deliver your keynote address. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you very much for those kind words and the warm introduction. I'm truly humbled and overwhelmed. Members on the dais, I don't see the dais though. CK Ranganathan, Rekha Sethi, and everyone else tuned into this live stream and on the Zoom call. As Nikhil, you said, there are a very large number of members who tuned in. My very warm greetings and namaskar to all of you. Let me first begin by thanking Aima for inviting me to share my thoughts at this very esteemed platform today. It's not only an honor, but also a privilege for me to have received the JRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award and to deliver this keynote right after. Thank you very much for this opportunity. 
I'm going to begin with an anecdote that exemplifies the uncertain and dynamic world that we are all living in, in these recent times. During our year and holidays, well, we would normally have traveled someplace but this time around, thanks to COVID-19, we were all cooped up at home. And thankfully I spent some quality time with my family on a chilly Delhi afternoon. I watched the popular animated film, Kung Fu Panda with my grandchildren, Shiv and Saina, five and two years old. In the movie, an untrained panda becomes a Kung Fu master and saves his village from the antagonist. We've seen this movie many times. The master says, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift. That is why we call it the present. Of course, the children enjoyed the movie as much as I did. And yet, I had two realizations from this event. The first realization is that this quote has been around for probably a century or more. Yet, the young generation may hear it from the most unexpected quarters, thus proving that learning and source of knowledge is ever evolving. So it is incumbent upon the current generation to adapt and evolve with the future generations so that we are speaking the language that resonates with all of us together. The second realization is based on the quote itself that change and future have always been associated with uncertainty. Then there are unprecedented events like the pandemic we are going through right now that provided the human race the opportunity to overcome all challenges and emerge victorious. So we must always see challenges as opportunities. The human race is very resilient. It more often than not surpasses challenges and uncertainties to evolve into a better version of itself. If the past two years of the unprecedented pandemic are not proof enough, our history is filled with examples of grave threats that were overcome by the resilient human spirit. Changes and disruptions, of course, come in many shapes and forms, from the regular change to drastic, like the ones we saw during the pandemic. Then there is also the strategic change, which is the result of a planned action or planned actions. However, in the recent past, the incredibly volatile and uncertain environment has undermined the effectiveness of a long-term forecasting and traditional strategic planning. The change in the world ecosystem has been disruptive, pushing people, organizations, and economies to the brink. Thus, achieving goals now requires a sea change in our models of operations, planning, and beliefs. As we stand today, global political unease, commodity and supply chain disruptions, health concerns, and innovations are adding to all the global uncertainty that we already have. To combat the ambiguous impact of these multitude of factors, leaders, public and private, need to develop balanced strategies to ensure growth and stability in the future. Another very crucial aspect in today's world is that not only is it changing faster than ever before, it is far more complex than in the past. The geopolitical situations around the world mixed with fast evolving consumer behavior and rapid technology advancements have seen even new age companies losing prominence as quickly as they gained it. Our ability to thrive in uncertain times requires unconventional thinking and calculated risks, including delivering difficult or unpopular decisions. 
in the current scenario where uncertainty characters characterized economic and social structures it is a race for organizations to move away from the traditional approaches of strategy and adopt evolved models the existing models of forecasting are not calibrated for new age challenges and thus required to be replaced with more agile forms of planning the human beings react with a survive bias to threats and thrive bias to opportunities since uncertainty is perceived as a threat usually individuals as well as large groups get into survival modes in the past we have seen public and private enterprise perishing in the survive mode however uncertainty also brings with it endless opportunities even though it may be counter intuitive to human nature today leaders and organizations are required to promptly activate their thrive bias and uncover hidden possibilities for future growth there are also benefits to the time of uncertainty as they often give rise to new undiscovered needs thrive approach leads to innovation and creates a positive outlook in the larger ecosystem as well it is no longer it is no more a question of if rather when the switch to thrive is adopted by everyone a study by harvard that recently caught my attention was the adaptive leadership model simply put it is the practice of mobilizing people to address tough challenges and grow by being more than just a leader from being able to link organizational change to aspirations of all stakeholders to creating an environment that embraces diverse views and uses the knowledge for greater good change and sudden change especially is usually met with resistance so it is imperative for a leader and the organization to anticipate the resistance and use emotional intelligence to build trust communication is also critical while incomplete or uncertain information may cause confusion an absence of communication can create even greater unease thus during times of uncertainty transparent communication can motivate all stakeholders to deliver results and spark new innovations a model that i developed along with my team is the ppp model no it is not public private partnership in my definition it is perspective people persistence the ability to get the right perspective while in the midst of uncertainty and change is often the inflection point to be able to step back observe and change the course is critical when operating in a fast paced environment by quickly analyzing the change an organization or individual can adapt to the situation people of course are at the core of everything that we do empowering people enables them to make decisions and motivates them to contribute meaningfully as i said earlier human being resist the uncertain thus it becomes imperative for organizations and leaders to be persistent in their effort to propel their vision through a coherent and judicious mix of such models we can overcome the uncertainties of the future in the recent past and especially over the past 2 years we have seen many entities and individuals be the leader in embracing the drastic changes and turning them into massive opportunities india is an obvious and clear example of managing disruptions and delivering results amidst evolving scenarios the collective strength of the people of our country its institutions the industry and policy makers have together ensured a success story filled with numerous achievements our society is amazingly resourceful and persistent the scale and speed of indian economy 
the economic growth over the past many decades has been impressive to say the least. Our country has not only evolved, but in fact leapfrogged into the future, providing to be proving to be the champion of change. Especially in the past, past couple of years, by complementing macro growth with micro all-inclusive welfare and strengthening the startup infrastructure, digitization, fintech, and tech-enabled development, energy transition, and climate action, the country has set itself for growth for the future. With India's growth estimated to be at 9.2%, the highest among large economies, the country is now in a robust position to withstand challenges and adopt a resilient approach for economic growth and welfare of its citizens. It is impressive beyond bounds the resilience, strength, and character showcased by our people during this pandemic. I recall clearly that while at Hero Motor Corp, we had proactively halted operations even prior to the national lockdown in March 2020. There were colleagues who were working tirelessly to provide food, other medical resources, all to the needy. Once we commenced operations, our entire ecosystem came together and worked to put the industry and economy back on track with record-breaking manufacturing and sales performances. What worked for us was an empathetic approach towards everyone, all our stakeholders, all our people. We were proactive to adapt to the dynamic situation and planned for multiple outcomes, multiple scenarios. I Personally, I'm an optimist, and I was very clear from the very start that Hero Motor Corp and its entire ecosystem will seize this opportunity, and we did. Making our mantra, we will not let this crisis go to waste. We are towards the end of the second month of 2022 and are talking of the end of this pandemic, of course. We have been in this position before, only to be faced with new variants, supply chain woes, inflation, and negative consumer sentiment. The stormy waves of uncertainty have lasted so much longer than we expected. However, one thing has changed. We are now responding to the situation rather than reacting. This is a step in the positive direction. Yet, the biggest positive has been the significant green and sustainable pull from all corners of the society. From a time when the green agenda had to be pushed vociferously, it is now being welcomed and propagated by individuals, organizations, and governments alike. India's renewed focus on sustainability through natural and organic farming, PLI on green energy, and the creation of funds will further India's efforts to meet climate change goals for a sustainable future. Hero Motor Corp is the only motorcycle and scooter manufacturing company listed in the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, and we will continue to drive our efforts both through our world-class manufacturing facilities, our goals of carbon neutrality and sustainability, and through cutting-edge clean mobility solutions. Governments and corporates across the world are taking giant strides in this direction. And I'm confident that this topic will only gain pace as we move forward. Clearly, sustainability is one area that is not clouded by any uncertainty and is a change that will be propagated universally. I began with a quote from a movie. Let me close with another very popular movie quote. This one, is from Spider-Man. Some of you may have probably guessed it already. It is, with great power comes great responsibility. It is imperative that all of us support ourselves, our resources, and our families, and also support those who require assistance, especially in times of dire situations. At the same time, we have 
put our humanitarian approach first, followed by a focus on sustainability, because as we go forward, these are the criteria that the future generation will judge us on. Profit for purpose has to be one of the guiding lights so that we can all see our planet and our society thrive. I thank you all once again to have me here. Today is a day I will always remember and cherish very fondly and thank everyone who has joined to hear me today. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Dr. Munjal, for your wisdom and your and your keen insight into management trends, as well as your innovation in, in, in instituting new management practices within Hero. The PPP framework that you talked about is truly innovative, and I and I look forward to discussing it with you in the future. But Mr. Munjal, you Dr. Munjal, you did talk about the future of mobility. And you have defined the motto of Hero Motor Corp as the future of mobility. What exactly is the scope of this mission? You've talked about sustainability and the need to move towards an ecosystem which is driven around uh, uh, addressing issues of climate change. But what does it exactly mean in, on the ground for Hero Motor Corp as well as for yourself? And what lessons can, can all the leaders and management students on this call take away from that? Nikhil, uh, in February of 2020, just before the pandemic hit us, I had launched our new vision, Be the Future of Mobility. And our mission to achieve our vision is create, collaborate, and inspire. It is through this mission that we will bring our vision alive. As I just said, it was in February 2020, specifically on 18th of February to be exact, in the sprawling Center of Innovation and Technology, the CIT, outside Jaipur, our world-class R&D center, where I unveiled this new vision of the company to the whole world. Through this vision, our aim is clearly to lead the mobility space in the future as well, as we have been doing for the past 21 years. Your second question on the scope is, in a way, asking me to give away our secret sauce. Our scope is a very large canvas. And through our vision, we want to ensure that we can provide mobility to as many lives as possible on this planet and beyond. At this stage, I just want to leave the rest to your imagination. Thank you very much, Dr. Manjal. Uh, to take that question a little further, I, as we as we do delve into the in, into mobility's future, is it more about the fuel or about the way that customers acquire vehicles? What is the priority and the change that you are seeing in this transition uh, as we move into the future? In my view. Future, the future of mobility is no longer limited to being related to change in fuel or how the consumer acquire and use vehicles. It is way beyond the scope. We have to consider what mobility means to people. The definition or need will differ from person to person. For some, it is freedom, freedom of movement. For others, it is their livelihood, to earn their livelihood a means to an end. For someone else, it is simply a means of transportation, taking you from point A to point B. And for some others, it is a statement of themselves in their environment. We live in a world of choices today. And therefore, mobility is way beyond this conservative or limited scope. My personal take also is going forward. It's not just about moving people. Mobility can be mobilizing, transporting goods, transporting people, transporting ideas. Look at what's already happening. Dubai, the Dubai police has already developed motorcycle drones, motorcycles which are going to be flying over people and looking down at people and checking 
what's going on, making sure that people are safe on the ground. So the scope is tremendous and huge. Many, many possibilities going forward. Thank you, Dr. Manjal. I don't know if that is that alludes to a certain business model or certain product ideas that Hero may be going into in the future, but we look forward to discovering that with you. Uh, Dr. Manjal, there have been so many questions that are coming in to me from Rekha, from the audience. And because we have limited time, I hope that I could ask maybe three or four or two or three of those questions to you. And they may Absolutely. be a little bit of repetition, but <clears throat> let me read them out as they come. Okay. Do you believe that the next generation do you believe that the next generation of consumer will prefer to rent or share evs instead of owning the vehicle and this is from parveen sony from gurgaon one more sony i i it so happens sir well um it, it's going to be a mix of both and maybe some more new stuff going forward and it's already happening today the sharing model is already existing across the globe, including here in India. I myself personally have, have, shop, have invested in a few companies on ride sharing and which I believe going forward is really going to take off. Having said that, the ownership model will also exist. The younger generation going forward are more and more looking at ride sharing and not owning. Thank you. Um, another question we have from Mr. Choksi from Indore is you've invested in battery swapping technology. What has convinced you that the scooter users will prefer to swap batteries instead of recharging those at home or office? Or is this a question of just covering the entire ecosystem and seeing what consumers uh, would prefer as we scale out this, uh, this transition? Well, you're right. We have invested in a joint venture with Gogoro of Taiwan for battery swapping technology. And Gogoro is, is the masters and, and very well experienced in battery swapping. Very successful five years of experience where millions and millions of batteries have been swapped. We are not only going in for battery swapping. We are going in for both the models of fast charging as well as battery swapping. As I said, it's a very, very successful model in Taiwan and, and China and some other countries that GoGro has already, already established. There are a lot of possibilities of battery swapping. Even in fast charging, you still go to a charging station. You wait there for your vehicle to get charged, whatever time it takes. In a battery swapping situation, you go to the battery swapping station or kiosk it's a matter of a minute or two that you can switch batteries and move on. Battery swapping is going to be also very successful for fleet models. So to me, there will be many situations where people will not have the possibility of, of fast charging the batteries because of where they live, because of where they work. Is their charging station available or not? So battery swapping will be available across the city every few kilometers. So for us, the type of, type of segments we are getting into, the various different models of motorcycles and scooters we will be getting into, a mix of both is the best possibility that we can think of. Dr. Banjal, this is truly from a user. Uh, it's from Kushal Kumar. He says, sir, how fast can we see the motors with electric batteries run? So how fast can we see uh, two wheelers from, made by Hokkido Motor Corp or by your investi companies? How fast will they run? Will they be comparable to today's, uh, vehicle, today's mobiles that you ma manufacture? Well, all I can say is that you have motorcycles today which are racing, electric motorcycles which are racing for speed racing. In other words, they are matching the, the combustion engine speed racing motorbikes. So that technology is all already available globally. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mandral, I have a question for you. Um, as we look 
at the current mode by which business is done there's a ecosystem which involves the manufacturer but also the suppliers and the sub component manufacturers and the ven- and the uh, and the vendors that that will sell the 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 vehicles as we look forward there is a transition happening at every different step given the fact that hero motor corp is the largest manufacturer of two wheelers in the world and has been for a couple of decades now this transition may not be as easy for others in your ecosystem how would you from a management perspective take these people along given the fact that some may not survive in their current business model right you're right there is a there is a huge disruption and a transition which is happening right now as we speak and some of us have been working on this transition now for a few years but we ourselves for the first time in the year 2012 itself we had shown the first hybrid scooter model which ultimately did not take off because our our partner went under but having said that we have been ourselves involved with electrification now for quite some time we then in 2016 invested in Ather Energy in Bangalore, a startup which is a very successful startup now with, with two models of scooters running on the roads and and really very performance oriented and feature laden scooters. So the ecosystem has been also transitioning for some years now. A number of the supply chain partners have already co-created. systems for electrification while they are still working on supply chain components for the combustion engine vehicles and there are many new startups that have come up for electrification components whether it's battery or motor or battery management system etc so that combination is already working and going forward i believe most of the current ice component suppliers will get into the electric components as well or otherwise there's not just evs there's hydrogen there's there's a lot of new stuff going on today for energy on the on the um, dealership side for a company like hero which has such a vast network of dealerships we have about 8 to 9000 touch points across the country one of our biggest strengths why would we let go of that strength it's how are we going to utilize that strength that hero has so we are already working very closely with some of our dealer net dealer partners that going forward who are going to become also our network for the electric vehicles it's for everyone to see how we roll out our network over the next few months as we launch our electric products but it's a very very interesting point that you bring out it is as i said a huge disruption and transformation for the entire network of the automotive industry and globally too thank you dr manjal i think it uh, it's 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 only a responsible cooperation such as yourself who has foresight to be able to take uh, uh, everyone along with them and to make sure that they adapt to the new realities and to ensure that they have the tools and the skills available to uh, to upgrade themselves f- for what is inevitable in terms of the disruption that we all foresee uh dr manjal it's been a pleasure to speak with you today and again many many congratulations on the jrd tata corporate leadership award it is again the most uh, prestigious award that aima has and also one of the most prestigious uh, business leadership awards in india uh, it is it is with great pride that we are able to confer it upon you today but we also look forward to your participation as as chairing the jury for next year's selection of the jrd tata corporate leadership award again thank you very much for joining us today dr banjal and and i and i'm sure the audience joins me 
in giving you a round of applause. Thank you very much thank for your time you, today. Thank you. Thank you again for for conferring this award on me, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you.